With me today is Kenneth Land, a preeminent well-being researcher. Ken, can you tell, tell us your current uh, title and institutional affiliation, please? <laughs> yes, I'm the John Franklin Crowell Professor of Sociology and Demography, Duke University. Very good, thank you. Um, what do you see as your main contributions to the field of well-being? Main contributions? Um, well, I, I got involved in uh, social indicators uh, research in the 19, early 1970s when I did a postdoctoral uh, fellowship at Columbia University and uh, the Russell Sage Foundation in New York City. And um, I stayed uh, active in social indicators research uh, through the 80s and 90s. And in the 1990s, the field uh, was enlivened by uh, being conjoined with the subjective well-being research uh, tradition coming out of psychology and related disciplines, um, leading to the creation of the International Society for Quality of Life Studies. Uh, in the, um, and I began editing uh, as the successor to Abbott Ferris, the newsletter called Synet, uh, which is um, short for Social Indicators Network News. And so I um, tried to put three issues of that uh, together each year and uh, consisting of news items about um, social indicators and quality of life well-being studies as well as uh, reviews of publications and uh, summaries of conferences and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. um, then in the late 1990s, the Foundation for Child Development uh, approached me and uh, they said that, you know, we've got all of these indicators of things that are happening to children and young people in, in American society, hmm. but we don't really have a sense of direction, you know, uh -huh. things in general getting better or worse or uh -huh. staying about the same, and uh, there are just too many things going on here. So they asked me, can you make sense out of this? So um, I said, I'll try. Uh, so I've been working with the Foundation for Child Development for the pa hmm. pa past 15 years. And after an initial period of basic research uh, leading to the publication of our first uh, peer-reviewed article in the journal Social Indicators Research in the year 2001, um, a couple of years later, uh, the FCD began to sponsor an annual release of um, our updated report on the latest uh, data and trends in uh, child and youth well-being in the U.S. Hmm. Uh, based on the um, 28 basic social indicators that we track wow. over time. It's a lot. Annual time series data on the U.S. Hmm. Um, uh, pertaining to children and young people ages 0 to 18 primarily, although for a few indicators going into young adulthood hmm. uh, to capture things like uh, completion of uh, high school diplomas and things of that sort. Hmm. Um, we, comp we compile those into uh, seven uh, domains of well-being based on the subjective well-being research literature uh, and put all of the seven uh, domains of well-being into the overall child and youth well-being index which tracks uh, uh, changes from a base year which is usually 1975 although when we want to include additional indicators we update that base year to 1990 or 1995. Hmm. Uh, which is also useful for um, um, when we want to uh, disaggregate the overall index by race and ethnic groups as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, um, and we've engaged in a series of peer-reviewed publications on the CWI over the years um, mm -hmm. since uh, 1998 uh, and uh, uh, the annual reports uh, since about 2003 wow. um, and uh, currently working on the uh, 2013 annual report, uh, which will be released uh, uh, within uh, three or four weeks, and uh, probably the FCD folks will arrange for a, um, a group of us to uh, go to Washington to do a presentation to U.S. Uh, Congress uh, persons and congressional staff. How exciting! Um, I mean, you're really going to have access to some policymakers. It sounds like. Yes, to some extent. We, 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 since the policy is often formulated by the staff members, yes. it's very important to, to get to them. Yes, yes. Now, what a massive undertaking. Can you uh, 
share with us, this is a tremendous accomplishment, can you share with us any of your results um, or findings that you think might be interesting or have practical import? Yeah, the overall index, the overall index um, um, shows um, a period of oscillations up and down in the late 1970s into the early 1980s mm -hmm. and then goes into a long slide beginning um, around 1984-85 and go into a long decline to uh, about 1993-94 and bottoms out. Mm -hmm. Then you have a period of recovery for several years into uh, the early 2000s and since the early 2000s uh, ups and downs, mm -hmm. um, some uh, uh, years of, of increases and some of decreases. Um, using 100 as the base year value for 1975 for the mm -hmm. overall index, um, the, the highest points achieved over the years have been in the range of 104 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. uh, most recently uh, for 2012-2011, um, um, uh, 2011, uh, where we, we backed off a couple of points from there, uh, mostly in, in the wake of the Great Recession yes. of 2008-2009 um, um, and the uh -huh. slow, slow economic recovery since then. The index is to some extent sensitive to economic cycles, ups mm -hmm. and downs, uh, but it also captures a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And we have compared trends in the um, overall CWI to uh, um, moving average, uh, smooth moving average of um, um, overall satisfaction with life responses uh, to, the, uh, to the, that type of question and the monitoring the future um, 12th grade samples, which date back to 1975 as well. Wow. And generally, um, the um, CWI and uh, the uh, smooth uh, um, um, overall life satisfaction response index from the MTF uh, surveys um, co vary reasonably well over time. So we, we are capturing, uh, to some extent at least, the um, uh, ups and downs in the quality of life of America's young people. Now that's of course only for 12th graders, but what, what the MTF has done since 1991 is include surveys um, of 8th graders and 10th graders as well as 12th graders. Mm -hmm. And for other questions in the MTF, the 8th graders and 10th graders tend to co vary in terms of changes over time pretty much with the 12th graders. Okay. So we have some confidence that, that we are capturing uh, at least for um, adolescents and teenagers um, trends and ups and downs in their overall quality of life. Very good. Um, any bright spots or challenges you see in terms of particular indicators or issues? The um, uh, there's some, um, um, in terms of the Family Economic Well-Being Index, um, uh, in the most recent years, in the wake of the Great Recession, we've lost a lot of ground uh, that we had gained up into the early 2000s, and we're just at or above the levels for 1975. Mm -hmm. This is for uh, families with children ages 0 to 18. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, community engagement indicators, um, um, uh, which means attachment to mainstream social institutions mm -hmm. such as education and, and the labor force for uh, teenagers mm -hmm. uh, and young people, um, college diplomas, um, uh, high school diplomas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, we've done better in, in, in the last uh, 15 years than in the, the previous 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the health, overall health index, um, we've done better on some of the indicators, such as uh, mortality rates for children ages 1 to 19 have mm -hmm. come down very substantially, mm -hmm. but uh, activity limitations are up, mm -hmm. um, as reported by their parents mm -hmm. um, in national surveys, and the overall health index is down, uh, primarily due to uh, the increases in uh, percentages of children who are overweight or obese um, you know, across the decades. And when you say activity limitations, can you tell me what that is? Uh, so these are uh, normal activities for children mm -hmm. going to school, playing, uh, uh, taking part in family activities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the again, as assessed by their parents in the National mm -hmm. Health Interview Surveys. But this, so there's been a diminution in some of those activities. Yes, the uh, the the that particular index, uh, that particular indicator series begins at around 5% mm -hmm. um, in 1975 
and in the most recent years it's, it's gone up to uh, 9 to 10 percent, so nearly a doubling of um, percentage of children um, uh, who um, have some type of activity limitation. So to some extent, um, uh, we've brought down the mortality rates, uh, so not as many are dying at, mm -hmm. at, at ch childhood and, and uh, teenage years, but, um, uh, but to some extent, um, activity limitations have increased, um, perhaps in part due to, um, to the increasing uh, obesity trend. I see, I see. Um, um, you've made many other uh, huge contributions to the field of well-being. Would you like to highlight any of those other contributions that you've made over the, in well, your career? Okay. Um, I, I guess starting in the 1970s at the Russell Sage Foundation, I edited a volume titled Social Indicator Models, which mm -hmm. brought together uh, a bunch of social scientists uh, looking at uh, the initial waves of the General Social Survey mm -hmm. and other uh, major data sources and uh, some of the, the best social scientists at the time, and, and uh, the volume was edited on mm -hmm. how uh, uh, one could apply um, statistical analyses to those data. Mm -hmm. um, Which is a special strength of yours, the mathematical and statistical modeling, is that correct? That's correct, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, most recently um, um, edited the, the, uh, um, um, the Handbook of Social Indicators and Quality of Life mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. research um, um, with um, a couple of uh, co-editors and uh, um, so various contributions over the years, various uh, um, um, approaches to, to measurement and index construction. Mm -hmm. um, an article with Michael Haggerty in 2007, mm -hmm. Sociological Methods and Research, which um, showed um, through uh, mathematical analysis and simulation uh, uh, analyses that there is an optimal weighting scheme for um, mm -hmm for a, a, a composite index in the general population hmm. uh, consisting of averages of uh, importance weights assigned to various indicators for the uh -huh. composite. And we also uh, showed that the so-called equal weights uh, uh, method, mm -hmm. which was adapted by the Human Development Index mm -hmm. uh, and used in numerous other studies over the years, um, has what uh, a statistical property that statisticians refer to um, as minimax. So it's a mm. minimax estimator in the sense that uh, the equal weights procedure minimizes maximum disagreements that mm. could occur among individuals with respect to importance weights for yes. components of a composite index. So um, it's really uh, dangerous to assume that everyone values certain life domains to the same importance, is that correct? That's correct and indeed um, um, because of that, um, uh, some uh, uh, social indicators uh, um, groups uh, around the world, such as the OECD mm -hmm. uh, group uh, uh, on, on their website, now mm -hmm. allow uh, individuals to, uh, uh, to assign uh, different weights to different components. Really? Of How wonderful. Individual <laughs> weights. Uh, and, and again, uh, you know, the equal weights method would say that, uh, well, it would minimize uh, extreme disagreements. Well, um, it's very good news uh, to me since I favor that approach. Can you tell me um, what you see as uh, uh, any further practical implications of your work that you'd like to highlight? Um, the um, uh, Child Wellbeing Index in particular, um, uh, the folks at the Foundation for Child Development who sponsored the project, they uh, concentrate on the policy implications of our annual reports and um, um, for example we were among the first uh, in the early 2000s to highlight the obesity trend and mm. there's been a lot of activity including uh, uh, Michelle Obama's work yes. to uh, try to get uh, better lunches for, for children at school. Yes, and, and the president's activity. wife. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And um, um, the, one of the success stories there is the increase incredible declines in the um, National Crime Victimization Surveys, um, percentages of, of uh, kids and families who um, have been victimized by violent crime in the past year, mm -hmm. in each year of the, the survey they ask that question. And they also ask if they've been victimized of uh, the perception of the age of the offender. Mm -hmm. 
And both of these series have come down dramatically hmm. in terms of um, um, the rates uh, per thousand um, kids in, in those groups uh, since about 1993-94. Hmm. Um, why is that? And that's a puzzling question. Uh, we think in part it's due to more active parenting, uh, mm -hmm. programming kids uh, for after school hours and mm -hmm. to uh, into various activities as opposed to letting them uh, go home and roam free uh, mm -hmm. on the playground or on, on the streets, mm -hmm. uh, which would potentially put them at risk. Yes. Um, but in addition to uh, more intensive parenting, um, we think that uh, another factor is uh, um, the increasing prevalence and use of video uh, games and other mm -hmm. electronic devices across mm -hmm. the past 15 years. Uh, which is, uh, as the time use uh, uh, studies show, uh, increasingly occupies the time of um, adolescents and teenagers. And uh, of course, the downside of that is it may take it may take them out of uh, um, um, situations in which they would be at risk of being uh, a victim of a violent crime. Mm -hmm. But it most likely puts them into a, a physically inactive situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, which, if, if um, consumption of soda pop and cookies are added to that, <laughs> uh, feeds into the obesity trend. Very interesting. Um, with someone with such a storied career, um, I'm curious as to what you think might be needed to keep the field of well-being research vibrant and growing. I think um, um, that, um, um, obviously, um, a set of scholars uh, has to, uh, to have the support of the general uh, academic uh, and research funding communities. Um, the, the quality of life well-being concepts are um, of, of quite significance to people outside of academia. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I, I have a sense that, that uh, the flow of resources necessary to keep uh, the academic uh, and research communities alive will continue. For that reason, mm -hmm. um, it's a concept um, um, that um, uh, ordinary folks are interested in, as well as uh, politicians and policymakers and uh, various international agencies uh, around the world and, and, and development agencies and so forth. So I think I think there's good reason to believe um, the field will will remain quite an active uh, field for decades to come. Well, thank you for your time and your tremendous contribution. Thank you.